Hi guys, so one of my favorite applications just added AI features and I want to pause and say we are officially on the AI hype train. Almost everyone with a laptop has had contact with ChatGPT and since then customers have been hungry for applications that are smarter and have some sort of relationship with them. This is also pushing app developers on the edge to trying to add AI features to their applications so that customers don't leave them for a smarter newer kid on the block. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my experience, my first impressions using Notion AI and also going to be sharing some thoughts that I have on the technology after this video. Hi, my name is FK and this is my Notion AI first impressions. So when I wanted to make this video, I thought of different ways where I can use Notion AI in order to get enough information to share with you guys. But then I thought, I'm a technical writer, I do a lot of technical writing, I've been doing technical writing for close to 6 years now. So why not just use Notion AI to help my day and see how much productivity boost I can get from it. So I was starting a new week and I had some stuff to do. I had to plan my day and within that day I needed to write an article on Apache Kafka to compare its strengths with a, a, a different product and also i was also working on a node.js course i was working on a node.js course and it would be cool to also use notion ai to do the course planning because i was going to plan the course in notion anyway so i thought to myself let me go ahead with this task and see how notion ai can help me boost my productivity so starting out planning my day like i said i wanted to write an article on Apache Kafka and I needed Notion to do that and I was going to use Notion AI to help me plan my day. So the first thing I told Notion AI to do was to just give me um, the a series of tasks, the series of tasks that will help me write the article on Apache Kafka and Notion AI went ahead, it created a list of tasks, it told me I had to do some brainstorming, I had to do research, then I had to outline, I had to write the main body, it was a pretty neat list and it even described every single task I had to do. So that, that, that was cool, that was cool, but this was since this was going to be like a plan, I needed it to be more structured in a way whereby I can check off the stuff I've done. So I told Notion AI, convert this to a to-do list. And it went ahead, put checkboxes behind each task, and that was cool. I could click the tasks that I was done with and the tasks that I, I could see, the tasks that I still had to do. Then after that, uh, it was doing good so far, so I was like, let's take this thing further. Um, why not add time slots? Yeah, tell me how much time I'm going to be spending on each task. Uh, maybe like a range or something. And it went ahead also, and it gave me, told me I was going to brainstorm for 30 minutes, I was going to outline for like an hour, I'm going to do my research for three hours and all that. And it was just, it was lovely. Notion AI, doing good so far. So, and that was cool. And then I looked at the, the entire, um, uh, time slots that Notion added and told it, yeah, can you tell me a total of this estimate? What, how much time I'm going to use overall to do this? And it was able to calculate that I, it was going to take 10 hours, 30 minutes. But funny enough, when I added all the time slots that it provided, it was 10 hours. I, I guess Notion AI was being considerate and giving me extra time, like some sort of buffer. So that was... That was that was neat uh it told me 10 hours 30 minutes even though my calculation there uh, gave me 10 hours then i then told it okay um help me put this into a schedule and start the schedule by 10 a.m and automatically notion ai arranged everything into a schedule 10 to 10 30 brainstorm this point to this point do this and if it was just looking all beautiful and i was supposed to end the day by 8 p.m. If I was a robot, because Notion AI didn't add any breaks, <laughs> so then I I highlighted the whole task list and told Notion AI um add breaks, add two 30 minutes break and one one hour break, and it understood it perfectly. It it added the breaks, maybe not too perfect because it ended up adding four 30 minutes break, which was technically two hours break, like it would be for the two 30 minutes and one hour, but it just broke everything into 30 minutes. I don't I don't know whether it was trying to understand my day. It says something about working with an 8.5 hour day, but it, to me, it was still pretty neat. It added it at very specific uh, points within the schedule that made a lot of sense and felt, yeah, this is cool, day planned. 
So after getting my day planned, which was done very, very well by Notion AI, I decided to get, go to the next task of the day, which is the article I needed to write, do some note taking and do some research on Apache Kafka. But as I wanted to start, as I hit the space bar to activate Notion AI, it told me to pay. And, and this was quite, quite surprising. I didn't think I had done much. There was a free trial. Is it a free trial supposed to last for like a week or something? I don't know. I think I hit some sort of limit, but I didn't feel I had done much even in terms of uh, queries that I have sent to the AI. Uh, but they just told me I couldn't go further. I had to pay. So I had to whip out $10 and pay because I had this video to do. So <laughs> I paid and I was able to go ahead. And like I said, I needed to do a research on Apache Kafka. So I wrote the title, yeah, Kafka Research, and I told it, tell me about Kafka. And surprisingly, it started telling me about a certain Kafka author and how his works is compared to other authors and how it was criticized. I was like, whoa, 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 hold up. What are you talking about, Willis? That, that, that was, I, I'm talking about Kafka, the technology, Kafka, the message queue. So I, I cleaned that out. I was, I, I've never heard of any Kafka author. I Googled that. Apparently there was a Kafka author. He was a German Bohemian novelist, I think. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I can't remember much. But then I cleared that description and I started being more specific. Describe Apache Kafka. And definitely at this point, it got it. And it told me, but Apache Kafka, then later I told it to tell me about the strengths of Apache Kafka. And it generated an amazing list of Kafka's strengths and why it is popular within architectures today. But I started, it started struggling when I wrote a different heading. I gave it a different heading and I told it to generate, a, a, to generate some notes under that heading. And it basically just looked at my entire document and regurgitated a different version of what I already had on my document. <laughs> so I don't know whether that is because of the data set it has been trained with, but I think there was some sort of limitation there as to how much it can understand its context. Another thing that um, I noticed was that I was doing my research uh, from another, from I was using other articles online to do my research and I was copying stuff into my Kafka notes. And one thing I realized was that um, the formatting was getting all messed up. When I copy text, it's all broken. You know? So I needed everything. I needed the text well formatted on, the, on, on one line. And I told um, Notion AI, I highlighted the text and I told it to arrange. I just got arrange. And I noticed it, it did that, it arranged the text, but it also corrected the grammar. And I, I didn't want that. So and it was quite cool. I felt it was quite cool. I noticed that it had spell check and grammar uh, uh, capabilities, uh, grammar fixing capabilities. But I didn't want that, so I had to revert that change. And I highlighted the text once again and told it, put everything on, I was like literal, <laughs> put everything on one line. And it did that and it didn't fix the grammar. So that, that was kind of cool. Uh, but later on, I noticed that I had to be doing that severally because I was copying a bunch of text. I had to be doing that severally. And I was like, wow, do I need to be typing? every time and telling the AI to fix this, there should be there should be shortcuts, there should be a quicker way to do this. And while I was asking myself quest that question, I noticed that the context menu of the Notion AI actually has your most used commands. So that was quite handy. You can see your frequently used commands, the commands that you have typed a couple of times, it is actually cataloging it and putting it into the context menu. So that was kind of, that, that, that was cool. Um, so I feel um, it's, Knowledge is still limited because I couldn't get a lot of facts from it about the research I was doing, but it's also not that bad because I was still able to um, structure my document correctly and have it generate a few simple lists here and there based on the topic, even though it didn't have in-depth knowledge about the topic I was trying to research on. By the way, if you have learned anything from this video so far, I would like you to hit the subscribe button because you know that encourages me to make more of these videos. I really appreciate that. Thanks. So now to content planning. That was my, the final thing I had to do for that day. I had to plan content for my new Node.js course. So Notion AI, get to work. So the first thing I did was to tell Notion AI, oh yeah, I wrote the title. Yeah, Node.js, learn Node.js by solving problems, Node.js problems. I, I, I wrote that title in my document. And I told Notion AI, um, 
tell me, give me the chapters that are going to be in this course. And brilliantly it did. It's, it, it gave me a nice list of chapters that that Node.js course would have. Like, this is cool. Let's go further. I highlighted the list and told it, yeah, give me the videos that are going to be under this course. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. It did it. It gave me at least, I think, four videos per chapter. And that was amazing. Everything made sense. I even told it to write a description about the course. Is it? But I noticed that it started struggling when I told it to create a database table. We all use database tables in Notion to create a database table for the content planning so that I can track the status of the uh, videos and also the dates on the activities I had to do. But it just created a simple table. I became more specific. I said, create a database table. It's to create a simple table. Well, specificity still works. I told it, create a Notion database table. Nah, it didn't work. It didn't create a table. And I was like, the, what, could be, what could be happening? Is it that it doesn't recognize that it can do this? This is Notion. It, this is a Notion widget. Database tables are very common in Notion. They, they were, database tables even came before the normal, regular tables that Notion now has. So I decided to switch gears. I was like, okay, um, why don't you do a Kanban board? A Kanban board view that I can just move cards, you know, based on the status of the task. Still couldn't do that. In fact, I told it to create a, I told it to create a board view. It still created a table. It still went ahead and created a simple table. And the, the pattern kind of started developing. I started noticing that it seems like Notion AI can't work with this advanced notion widgets at this point in time it looks like it's something it doesn't support yet it's still a very very new feature so we can cut it some slack but that was something i noticed i even um, had to just create the table myself i created the table myself i wanted to like hack the process i created the table myself but then i highlighted the table with the intention of telling it to probably add more columns or edit a particular column or stuff but i noticed that when i highlighted the table the usual ask notion option that used to come up in the context menu didn't show up it didn't show up at all and this is something that works on text it works on lists and other simple items on notion but it doesn't work on the table i also created a kanban board uh, manually i lighted it nothing it didn't give me the ask notion ai option so i kind of noticed and confirmed that it seems like it doesn't support this advanced Notion widgets yet. And that is something you need to consider, especially if you're going to be paying $10 to use the technology right now. So now that I'm done planning my day, I have some final thoughts after trying Notion AI. Um, the first point is on handling complexity. I feel it's still a very, very strong consideration you want to have before you pay for the product. I don't know uh, if you have any, if anybody knows better, I would like you to put that in the comment section. But as at now, I still don't know how to work around the advanced components like database tables, Kanban boards, and the rest. Um, so that's something that I think you should keep in mind. The second point is on pricing. I know that on the Notion AI page, they are comparing themselves to ChatGPT and all these other popular emerging AI tools. But I don't think they are in the same scope. I think I don't even think it's beneficial in the long run for Notion to be trying to compare compete with something like ChatGPT. I think they have different scopes, and Notion should just focus on serving Notion users more and helping them get the best out of the product. So I feel Notion AI is in its own category of AI and holding, and they should just try to optimize towards making their users get the best out of Notion. The final point is on who I feel is their closest competitor or which tool out there is going to suffer most from this innovation, this new feature that Notion is adding. And for someone like me, a technical writer, I think it's going to be Grammarly. Grammarly, I don't think they have very specific AI tools right now. They might be, you know, be doing some AI stuff in the background, but they do grammar checks, they do spell checks, and they set the tone of your document and all that. I pay at least $12 a month for Grammarly, but now I have Notion, 
in which I do all my writing. I do all my writing in Notion. And Notion already gives me all that. That's the grammar checks, the spell checks, the uh, document tone. It already gives me that and a whole host of other features for just $10 a month. So I think uh, for a writer like me, why would I need Grammarly when I can do or I can get everything that Grammarly gives me within Notion? So I think for me, Grammarly is the one that is most likely to suffer the biggest hit from Notion introducing Notion AI. So these are my takes. I believe it's a neat tool. And if anything you've seen in this video has convinced you to go for it, I advise that you go for it. I've already paid for it and it looks like something I'm going to be using going forward. Um, like I said, if these are just first impressions, if you have any other suggestions of how to get the best out of Notion AI, please, please, you're welcome to my comment section to drop your hints, to drop your points so that people can learn. And also, as I continue to learn the technology, I'm most likely going to be making more videos on Notion AI because this is something I use every day. So I have, I'm deeply invested in it. So as, as much as I learn more stuff and how to do more things with Notion AI, you're going to be seeing a lot more videos from me. So that's a wrap on my first impressions. See you in another video. Bye.